Just FPV. Hello there, tribe. Let's go back to 2016 where I lost my Phantom FX61 and decided to buy a Skywalker X6 to fill the gap. From today's perspective, this looks pretty much retro, but I can tell you it's worth it. Hang on, let's build something new. Chapter 1 The Build. So I began to build on it and uh, I had this idea of strengthening the wing with uh, some fiberglass cloth and varnish on water base. So this is what the people call wind minimax and I, for me, I uh, can't get that here in uh, the country I live in. So there's something like varnish with uh, on water base and that's fine. So take the cloth and I went nuts with that. Today's mission is to cut some glass fiber uh, cloth and uh, make it uh, a part of the canopy of the body, more or less, of this X6. The used cloth is uh, 80 grams per square meter. Um, this could be, this would be pretty, pretty tough. Let me show you how I did it. There's nothing special to it, and the explanations come along from back in 2016. It's just a basic layer. I'll provide the foam to soak a bit, get a bit sticky as we will apply the cloth afterwards. It doesn't have to be that much, just let it soak a bit. This whole idea by just uh, putting the varnish on and uh, well spread it out on the cloth is just uh, to eliminate any bubbles you could end up with. So, um, you can see here everything is getting wettened and then just tossed on, like so. Just begin to roll it. Make it smooth. Gently. Having the cloth that smooth is really awesome. No bubbles, no wrinkles, nothing. That's really cool. That's fun. The problem come in the nose where those uh, curves are so you got to cut in the sides but I guess you'll show that I'll show it in a minute we do some cutting to get those uh, curves out you won't get them out with you just um, skip to cut it so I'll cut the cloth in here uh, this could be good get it back in shape so, yeah. and you can take the other side and just overlap. Okay. See, the real crazy people go nuts with um, resin and stuff, epoxy. And I was fed up with that. I had my experiences with it and I didn't like it. So I went for this and this is much cleaner. Today's task is just to coat this part of the wing with uh, fiberglass and uh, the initial task will be just to sand it a bit. I got some sanding paper here and just to rough it up to make this these small dots away. And then I'll take this cloth and just use it onto the wing, put it onto the wing with the main wax or something similar. Um, so it would be pretty uh, fast. The only special things here will be this dot for the servo and to manage this all would be flat. Most of the shiny wilderness has now vanished after being sanded, so the surface is ready to get coated. It will suck some of the um, meat wax and glue it all together, you know. I must say it's pretty awesome. It really goes pretty well here. Pretty clean, smooth, uh, smooth surface. Ah, that's one here, but Otherwise, pretty clean. What do you say? I say I would have made a difference today <laughs> from today's perspective. And uh, anyways, the belly of the fuse did get a little more attention and uh, more stiffness as well did the wingtips. After that, I took a big break. I mean, real big break. But I got all together again at uh, 2020 or 2019, somewhere there. So that's how it looked like. 
Chapter 2 Maiden Flight Pure manual? I will give it a try. A second try. This time with video on. Wish me luck! Whoa, that was pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess so. I remember I just um, had too less, uh, too little throttle on it, and uh, it died, nose dived down. So after that, I just hit the throttle, and it went off. Okay, fine. Um, this is manual. It's line of sight, and uh, the wobble, the jello, comes uh, through the tape. I've just taped a camera up on top of it because I didn't want to spoil my my HD cam right in the second flight or first flight to be honest so yeah that's where the wobble come from. it comes from um, what about to say yeah um, uh, the wing was stuffed with a um, tornado OSD from Cyclops pretty popular back in the days but by nowadays we're 2020 and well yeah um, I'm an addicted to iNav you know <laughs> you don't go along with tornado OSD and which ended up to be my fatality later on but that's it for the maiden fly you see uh, it's really flying well and i'm still flying it line of sight um don't know if the video ever went on the vtx did it work i don't know <laughs> at this point yet it was nice flying it and here comes landing i hope you enjoy it now that's how a lucky fat shark looks like i guess let's head over to the part where i said <coughs> it would become a fatality later and here you see the next flight with the tornado sd and line of sight and i was too excited by flying it that was good everything was cool well i decided to land and you'll see that in a second <laughs> and this went well too but um that's it one little thing i miss being used to enough is when you land you hit the disarm switch and everything is good. Tornado SD hasn't such things. And as I rush out in my excitement to get the plane, I do another thing. Hit the throttle. So what happens is ESC and motor burns out. My mate just asked me, well, is it meant to do that smoke up there? <laughs> I said, oh no. <laughs> Chapter 3. Switching to INAV. Well, I get that task it was overdue, so here we go. Left, you see, INAV, right, Tornado SD. Hmm. Okay, let's swap it out then. The cook DSC had left its scars, but everything was good, so I began to mop the plate where the flight computer would sit on. I don't really like gluing my FCs to the bottom plates, so I like to keep them detachable. Therefore, I use zip ties to just keep the FC in place. This is nice, you can just zip them off, or cut them off and there you go again. Everything's tight and good. Further I swapped out the motor because the other one was burned of course. Chapter 4 Remain with INAV I would like to dedicate this part of the video to a guy called Snafu, which commented the following. I'm glad I bought the 27 inches monitor so I can watch a 4 inches slice of what's going on when someone films vertically. And he is totally right on that. <laughs> So, um, my bad, of course. Um, how about Maiden in 4K? Are you with me? Will you watch it on your 27 inch screen? Here we go, Snafu. This is for you. Successful.
this is a part where I'm about to land and uh, I'm gliding in that smoothly as I could. Uh, the wing is dancing a bit, you see, we are near the ground and the ground effect takes over and lets it dance and there we are. Have a look at the stats, um, they are not that impressive, although, yeah, well, it flew. That's how it uh, reported that it flew, so 23 minutes. Save and sound. Now, we need to tune this bird a bit. I saw that a side of that flew pretty, pretty, pretty well. Um, gliding in like like a glider, of, apparently. And um, cruising at some ranges between uh, 5 to 10 amps. Speed range from 50 to uh, 100 kilometer, kilometers an hour. That was pretty nice. For me, it was just important today to find out if it will fly, and how it flies, if I can get it tuned. And <laughs> yes, I did. And I didn't even forget to save the settings. So yeah, perfect. 10 out of 10. Now, let's get this bird sexy and get her back in the air next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I guess that is all for this video and we will take a break here now so I can continue on the next one. In the next episode about the X6 we will see the tuning flights and lots of 4K footage from the onboard cam. How about that? If you liked the video don't forget to give it a like and if you dis disliked it well take the other one. As usual thank you so much for watching my content. It really pleases me to see that somebody reached the end without skipping. <laughs> Anyway, take care everybody and fly safe.